Hi, Tom Stewart here with Clean Business Today. I'm with both my partners here, two of my partners. I've got uh, Derek Christian there in the middle. Hey, Derek. And Howdy. is with us. Um, the original uh, cleaning business builders uh, trio going back a, a, a good long ways. Um, just uh, wanted to uh, take a minute and thank everybody for, for, for uh, taking some, some time out of the day and, and, and joining us. We were... Uh, Liz and Derek and I were chatting a little bit before we started, and we made note that there seems to be a number of uh, discussions floating around there about, about acquisition opportunities. There's uh, some companies that are thinking about uh, maybe reducing their footprint in the industry, or people are thinking about they want to do something other than run a, run a cleaning business now that uh, things have, uh, in, in a lot of cases, been temporarily shut down. And other companies think uh, this could be an opportunity to go out and uh, grab some additional business. Um, Derek, I know that, that you always have your ear to the ground on such things. What are, what are you hearing? Yeah, a lot of people know that I've bought and sold a lot of companies over the years, so they tend to reach out to me and we are seeing a fair amount of action, uh, particularly in the smaller companies. Um, they've decided that, you know, if there were a lot of people who are close to retirement are not looking very excited at the idea of having to rebuild again, because as most of us are expecting, we're not going to come back to full speed. We're going to need to rebuild. And for some of the folks who are closer to retirement age, they've decided that, you know what, I just don't have it in me again to do this again. Um, I just want to get rid of my clients, let somebody take over. Um, some other people have decided that uh, I've seen a couple of folks decide that they don't want to ever have that many employees again, that they want to have a smaller employee base. Um, a lot of people have been really surprised um, who thought they had a really strong team and uh, as soon as people started having the option to not work for money, um, their teams evaporated on them. And uh, up to a lot of them, that felt like a pretty strong betrayal. Um, now, not a lot of people have a lot of cash out there. Um, so what's happening in most cases is people are selling their uh, business or their clients for a percentage of revenue. 10% um, for three years or 20% for six months, some type of, listen, I, I'm going to give you my client list. I'm going to tell my clients I'm going out of business. Um, whatever you service out of them, you can have. Uh, I get a percentage of is basically what they're doing. Uh, and people who get PPP money are kind of excited because they have to get their payroll back up to a certain level. And acquiring somebody else's customers is a relatively easy way to get there. So uh, a deal that would look pretty attractive to me is if somebody came to me and said, I'm willing to give you my client base, but you got to give me 20% for six months. If I'm getting the PPP money, where basically my labor cost is free for the first, what, almost three months of that, I have no cost. So I'm still making money, even giving them 20%. So we're seeing that in almost every market. A lot of people are reconsidering whether or not they want to be doing this. Um, that is one of the things that is an opportunity in something like this is you're going to see a little bit of consolidation. Um, also, um, you don't really want to run an independent contractor model right now. Um, the PPP money is not for independent contractors. The EIDL money gives you money per employee. Um, so if you're running independent contractors, you're not getting much government aid right now. Um, so the independent contractor companies in particular are feeling quite a bit of pain, whereas the employee model companies are getting some government help, which I think is going to be an interesting trend to see as well. Do you think there's a relationship between those two dynamics where uh, companies that are based on, a, on an independent contractor model might be uh, looking to, to reorganize or merge or, 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 or sell just because the, uh, the, the grant monies are in, in, and loans are harder to get? Yeah, I mean, for, for those of us that own cleaning companies, we're looking forward to getting some money. And, you know, you can argue how quickly we're going to get the PPP money and the various grant monies. But I think most of us think we're eventually going to get it. Uh, that's a whole other topic we'll get to in a little bit. And that gives us some money to rebuild. I can't imagine trying to rebuild from a dead stop with no funds. Um, I, I can't even imagine how you would do that. I mean, you're basically starting over again from zero. And a lot of those folks, I think, have decided to leave the industry. Um, also, they just got an abject lesson. A lot of the people who opened on the independent contractor model um, kind of got into the market uh, post-2008, sort of the handy business model, just go online and get some independent contractors to send out to houses. And they've never had a bad market. Um, and they just got an abject, an abject lesson in that owning a business um, isn't all straight up. And there are some really crappy times too. And they are now maybe reconsidering the idea that 
owning a business is a fantastic thing and maybe they should really just go get a job. So you've got some of those forces going on as well. Um, you, they're seeing the bad part that you can go four months without pay potentially. So I feel bad smiling because I'm not, I'm not happy this is happening to anybody out there. Um, but it's kind but of you are smiling. Uh, yeah, but but on the other hand, it's like I, I'm glad they're finally getting to see like the other side. It's not just straight up all the time, and everything's not amazing. Like there's there's downsides to everything too. So um, I'm not at all happy that it's happening to to uh, to our independent contractor friends, uh, but I'm kind of happy to be sharing the 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 smart business move idea here <laughs> that we're all kind of in it. Yeah. Well, and like I said, I'm definitely happy that we've got employees. I wouldn't want to have independent contractors right now. Um, I know cleaning company owners that are getting $250,000 PPP uh, grants or loans, but when they spend it on employees, it's going to turn to grants. And that's just a huge competitive advantage. Um, that'll generate what half a million dollars or more in revenue with no labor cost for them. Um, and that's awful hard to go up against. Um, so, and, 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 you know, I mean, just to kind of dig the hole a little bit deeper, if you will, it's, uh, I've, I've heard, you know, people in, in both sides of the aisle in Congress say that since independent contractors are able to apply for, for unemployment benefits, that the rules are going to change to where it's going to be more difficult for companies to use the IC model, the way it's been used in the past, because, they aren't paying into unemployment, but in the future they will. So the thinking is that that when the dust settles on the other side of, of, of where we are right now, that more companies are, are going to have to use the employee model because the rules of doing ICs is going to be a lot uh, more restrictive than what it has been in the past. Yeah, there's going to be uh, a reckoning at some point. Um, now, for us, there's some bad news. In Ohio, they've already increased our unemployment from 2.5% to 4%. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, they already took us up a 1.5%. Um, wow. And somebody's going to eventually have to pay for those independent contractors. And I think they're going to start looking around. I wouldn't be surprised if you don't see some type of independent contractor tax coming out soon um, because everyone's now paying for their unemployment. And eventually someone's going to say, well, wait a minute, we got to get, get that money back. All the employees paid in but the independent contractors took money out. They got to start paying in now too. Hmm. Yeah. I had thought about that. So Derek, one of the things I really have always appreciated about having you as a partner is that you think differently and it's always um, like a, a, a great brand new perspective for me. So yeah, that's awesome. Uh, you were one of the first pe people that ever mentioned to me the independent contractor model way back in the day you're like yeah this is going to be a new thing this is a this is where things are going i was like wow really mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. remember when was it that home joy and handy first started doing their thing and what was it before it was handy what was it called handy was in the name wasn't it handy. yeah it was handy book i believe Oh yeah, handybook. Yeah, or handbook. Yeah, yeah. something like that. Yeah, and we, did, that. and we did the uh, disruptive innovation summit. And we were in Orlando, I think, at, at, at one of the ISSA conventions. Yep. Yeah. Well, you are seeing some of the bigger guys shut down. I don't know if you saw, but Circle, um, which was sort of like Handy, um, shut down like three days into the uh, stay-at-home order. Also, Who did? I'm sorry. Who did? Tackle, it's like T A C K L E. Um, they were more in my space, the handyman space, but they also did do um, cleaning. And the, the idea, the brand name was Tackle Your To Do List. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, they were running really aggressive ads on Facebook of people magically mounting televisions for $50 and things like that. Um, the other thing which has happened, which not a lot of people have talked about, but I know some people who are, who earn their living this way, is Amazon completely shut down their independent contractor cleaning marketplace. You can't book a cleaning on Amazon right now. Um, they didn't want the legal liability. For fear, uh, for fear of spreading COVID-19. Mm -hmm. So people that were making their living on the Amazon platform, they've temporarily just shut it down. 
and said, you know, we're a big enough company that we don't want to be in the news seeing sending people into people's houses and be responsible for the hygiene or lack of hygiene of our independent contractors. And there's too much liability. So to be safe, we're shutting it down, um, which I wonder to what extent that might be a permanent decision that a someone at Amazon sitting around going, we decided to shut it down temporarily because of the liability, but do we really want the liability ever again? They never really uh, were able to uh, get that thing off the ground. In they didn't have much traction. So I'm wondering if it just makes sense to just be done with it and not try again. I, I'm thinking of what, that's kind of what happened with Procter & Gamble back in the day. They wanted to, to get into this market and it was like heavier lift than they had anticipated. Right, Derek? Yep. Um, they decided they didn't want to do it because of the brand risk. Their big concern was somebody would eventually steal something. Um, and if it was a Mr. Clean branded company, it would get in the news. You know, Mr. Clean stole $500,000 from some little old lady. And they said, you know what? I don't want to do it. Um, and right around that time, because I was on that team, um, Paula Dean's uh, home cleaner had stolen a bunch of her jewelry and it got in the news. I don't know if you remember that at all. Um, and at the time, everyone was like, you know what? If some random cleaner stealing from Paula Dean got in the news, imagine if that had been a Mr. Cleaner or Swiffer branded um, cleaner that was in there. And they said, you know, let's just back away from that. We make an awful lot of money on product. Let's not get into the service space. And, you know, I think to a certain extent, same thing with Amazon. If you go to Amazon Home Services, it'll still be up. But if you actually try to book in any zip code in America, it says coming soon. Wow. Wow. Interesting. Oh, that's yeah. kind of good to know, though. Because I, I, I know a couple of people, uh, my former cleaners, that had gone out and decided they were just going to work for Amazon that are regretting that decision now. Oh, I bet. So, you know, another thing I was wondering if we could talk about today, um, not to cut you guys short on, on this conversation, but I was wondering if uh, we do have a question too, before I hit my point, I'll hit uh, Betsy's question. Any idea who, when, well, gosh, it's. <coughs> Stimulus and unemployment. Uh, deadlines are um, stimulus. Is that the twelve hundred dollars that uh, the IRS is sending out to individuals? I don't know if there's a deadline for that or unemployment either. Well, unemployment's July thirty first currently. They could potentially extend it, but it's currently till July thirty first. Um, both for the extra six hundred dollars and the loosened restriction. Um, but the but the stimulus is kind of until you everybody gets it and then they'll be doing it until everybody that's qualified gets it. Isn't that correct? Yeah, I saw something. They said they're expecting they'll, they'll be sending it out as late as a year from now. Um, oh that most of, most of the people who had direct deposit and stuff on file got it right away. But it's going to take a long time to issue all the checks. <coughs> well, they had to I'm stop for a week because they decided to put President Trump's name on all the checks. <laughs> Which I thought was funny. They can't send them out without a signature. <laughs> I love it. Uh, what have you guys heard anything about this two thousand dollar, the new two thousand dollar stimulus thing? Have you guys heard anything about that? I don't think it's going anywhere. Um, there is some discussion about it, but um, most major areas are starting to reopen. Um, Texas is opening up next week. Here in Ohio, we're opening up on May first. Um, now, not completely. Our governor's been very clear that I'm not just going to throw the doors open. Um, but things are starting to turn. I was actually telling Tom and Liz, um, Handyman Connection, the company that I'm now running in Cincinnati, um, at our low point was getting six work orders a day. And today we had 25 work orders. Um, our normal for this time of year is about 25 work orders. So when our governor on Friday said, we're going to open back up on May 1st, it's like somebody opened up the faucet again. I think a lot of people are just happy to know we've reached the low. Um, the stock market has re rebounded almost 50%. So a lot of people have said, okay, this isn't the bottom. Uh, you know, or this is the bottom. This is as bad as it's going to get. I can live with this. I still have some money. Um, so I don't think we're going to see a lot more stimulus. I, I think you'll probably see uh, more SNAP money. I think you'll probably see heightened unemployment still. But everyone just getting a check, I, I don't think you're going to see that. At least that's my opinion. Um, of course, the stock market's still a bit rocky. We were down two and a half percent today. I think the really, really interesting thing uh, in the markets today was oil. And I'm looking for that crude. Uh, you can buy a barrel of crude oil for $13 right now. Yeah, you're starting to get a fair amount of 
of, of pushback on the stimulus stuff, though. A, a lot of people are starting to feel like it's getting a little out of hand. Yeah. Um, 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 Betsy, let us know if we didn't um, answer your question the way. Oh, no, it looks like we did. Thank you, bunch. Just sorry, off topic. No, not off topic at all. Everybody we don't have a topic. On, yeah. Anybody that's on this Facebook Live, feel free to um, chime in with any questions that you have related to um, what we're going through right now. I mean, originally, honestly, we were planning on talking a little bit about the PPP plan. This morning, they were saying they were having a deal. They were expecting it to pass this afternoon. Yeah, it didn't pass. Um, now, I still think it is going to pass. Honestly, I think what's going on is there was so much bad press about people getting the loan that shouldn't have gotten the loan that they're probably trying to fix some of that uh, before they dump another $250 billion in because they got so much bad press. So mm -hmm. that would be my guess of why it slowed down a little. I don't think it's not going to happen. They've already announced what's going to be in it. And it's not a bad program. I think it was, what, $250 billion for um, small business, $75 billion for hospitals, and $25 billion for testing. So it didn't feel like they crammed a lot of junk in there. It seemed like, to me, it looks logical. So, yeah, it's 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 going to be you know a good program. You know, they still have a lot of issues though. I mean, the companies who need it least seem to be benefit benefiting from it most. You know. Apparently. Yeah, I saw something. Did you know who the biggest PPP lender has been so far? No. J.P. Morgan. Yeah. And, you know, accounting firms, a lot of, uh, you know, people who are able to work from home, those companies are, are getting those funds and this is all pure profit for them because they're not- Yeah, the number one industry actually is construction. Yeah. Construction got more PPP funds than any other industry, yet in every single market, construction is considered an essential service and is continuing as normal. Not here. Yeah, really? Not okay. here. No, uh-uh. So- but, uh, 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 number two is uh, biotech and medical testing. Wow. <laughs> and uh, you know, even even some of the some of the the larger uh, companies who you know got like a hundred million dollars and they're they're decided to give it back. Um, the way the law is written, basically, they're just repaying the loan immediately, and those funds cannot be redistributed. So those go back uh, to the treasury. So even though they're giving it back, they might as well have kept it because it isn't going to be going to any other small business. I think people still want to see them give it back. Yeah. Um, now I'm seeing on here, uh, Betsy just made a comment that um, there's no one else she can talk to, no one else giving advice. Tom, I thought you were going to share a secret of how you can actually talk to some people. Yeah, we got a... Uh... Super secret. Holding on to it for a little bit longer. I know I'm ruining it by putting it too early in, but she asked the question. So. No, you, it's great. Do you want to explain what this number is? Um, basically, the number that you just put out there is the uh, customer service line for the Small Business Administration, um, and they have like no wait. Uh, how long did you wait when you called them, Tom? Well, it depends when I call. Sometimes I've waited for about a half hour. I've talked to them multiple times over the last 24 hours. But today that they were were, were pretty uh, pretty fast. Yeah, I was calling eight to five, five a day, minutes. and in less than two minutes, I was talking to someone every single time. And every um, time, and when you talk to them, I mean, these are people that are like working from home; they're not together. So you're you're talking to somebody different each time, and it's, it's like the left hand doesn't know what the right one's doing. So it's just like a whole new discussion. So yeah, sometimes you have to call back a couple of times. But um, what most people, uh, what this is good for, isn't PPP because that goes through your bank. What this is good for is the economic disaster loan. I forget the acronym, but the I other one. Yeah, I yeah. Yeah. Um, that is a good number for this. Um, it, what it seems like talking to people is if you got $10,000 deposited in your account, um, if you call them, they will tell you, um, they will send you a link to your portal page, which will show you how much you were approved for the big loan. And uh, the two people I know who did this each had approved up to half a million dollars for the bigger loan. If, um, you're, if you're lucky, and this is where you have to call multiple times. Right. I didn't, I didn't get that before. much. Yeah, I, I haven't either. I've, first talked, time. I've talked to them at least a half a dozen times. And but you know, I'm talking I'm calling for different companies and this conversation because I'm learning something each time I do it. And I'm making yeah. it good friends because they're really nice. I mean, they're trying to be helpful and they feel bad when they aren't able to like tell you how much money you're getting. So, you know, in the part, I almost got to talk to somebody supervisor one time. So I'm, I'm starting to. 
Yeah. Well, I was calling on the behalf of a company that applied for five different branches and they were actually really helpful because they were able to say this branch and this branch were approved. You'll have the $10,000 in your bank account within three days. These three were flagged as duplicates. Um, eventually, you know, when you get a call for your bigger loan, be sure to address that these three are duplicates and have a discussion from there. Um, and, uh, you know, we found that sometimes you got to call in a couple times because like Tom said, they're all working at home and they don't all have the same knowledge. The first time I called in, they were like, we can't give you any of that information yet. The second time I called in, he's like, yeah, sure. Let me look. Well, it looks like we ran your background check. You know, you're probably about three days away from getting the money in your account. So they're, they're not in a giant call center. And if you can imagine how difficult it would be to train your people if you couldn't bring them into the office. Um, SBAs tried to train all these people remotely with no supervision. So yeah, your, your results are going to vary. But if you call a couple times, almost everyone I know has been able to get some useful information. Yeah. And, you know, when I uh, call, I'm typically calling like I'm looking, I'm representing just one company. And when I don't get the answer I'm looking for there, it's like, well, I've got a few other companies that I run and I just kind of go down the list. And I did that, I don't know, about three times maybe until... I went through that list again and one of them somebody caught and started looking at like bank accounts and one of the bank accounts for one of the companies was missing a digit and i was actually able to get that corrected over the phone so i don't know why they didn't catch it the first three times but uh yeah i and i'm going to be calling them several times a day oh yeah and they're open from eight o'clock in the morning till eight o'clock in the evening and this is eastern time seven days a week and I noticed last night because I like called like at 750 Eastern time, got done about 810 or so and immediately called back and an auto attendant answered. I mean, auto attendant's going to answer it anyway, but it's a different auto attendant. You just wind up bouncing around into some endless loop and, you know, they won't answer the phone after eight o'clock at night. But they were supposed to open at eight in the morning and I called maybe five minutes after eight and bang, they, they were right there. And it kind of gave me the feeling if I had to call before eight, it would, you know what? I take that back. I called before eight. That was the part that, that, that threw me. I called about 7.50 and somebody answered the phone. And that was what, what really got me confused. I was like, crap, I should have called earlier. So I don't know how early is early, but uh, don't, don't wait until exactly eight o'clock because I thought I was going to be stuck in queue for 10 minutes or yep. so. I thought I was going to be stuck in queue for an hour. I got myself all ready with a little side project, had them on speakerphone, you know, was ready to be doing something while I was waiting for someone to answer. So when they answered, I was almost confused. I, you know, they're like, hello. I'm like, there's someone on the phone. What? So um, you are going to get various answers. I, some, you know, Greg's posting that he's had some problems. What I've seen in general is the people who got the $10,000 um, when they call, get emailed the portal. If you haven't gotten the $10,000 yet, um, most of us are being told quite to the stage yet. But in my case, and I think in Tom's case, they got into some pretty big details. Let us confirm your bank account number. We've run your credit check. We've run your background check. So I kind of know where I am in the process. And he even told me, based on what, what I'm seeing here, you're about three days away from getting the $10,000 in your portal. And I'm like, great. Now they keep telling everyone that you're going to get an email on how to log into the portal. Nobody I know has gotten that email. I think it's broken. Um, but the people who called in and got emailed that do get to the portal and see everything. But they're going to ask that every time. And the question you're asking is, I'm hoping you could help me get the link, my link to the portal. They're yep. going to say, well, have you gotten an email yet? And it's like, you know, I've been having problems with my email. A lot of stuff's going to spam. I'm looking for it. My IT people are working on it. And all that's true, by the way. I get a ton of email and there's a very real chance that if I ever got that email, it might take several days to, 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 to dig it out. So, you know, part of my whole discussion is helping them understand that, that, you know, my email is not hundred percent reliable. So if you guys could help me out, it would be awesome. Haven't gotten the exact response I'm looking for yet, but at least that's the, the angle that we're working. But the cool thing is that telephone number works and you're talking to somebody that at least has a chance of helping you. So long story short, uh, Greg, call back. So don't accept the answer that you have to wait longer for an email. That's only what that one guy is saying. Call back. You'll get somebody else and ask the question again. In a and normal, call, go ahead, Tom. I'm sorry, Liz. A normal call center would say, well, it looks, it looks like it. you've already called us five times already. <laughs> but these guys have no clue how many times you've called. So they think it's the first time you're calling. So just keep. <laughs> 
Just keep, keep calling. calling. Just say, okay, thank you, and call again. Um, but, but I have only heard that people are getting, um, going to getting their link and seeing that they were funded from people that have already gotten the ten thousand dollars. So if you haven't gotten the, the ten grand yet, you probably are going to have to wait just a, a little bit longer. Yeah, once you get the ten thousand, I think is when you want to really push to get that link. Although, like I said, it was useful for me because I found out that three of my companies are tied up as potential duplicates so that I can start clearing that up. Yeah, there's all kinds of weird stuff that could be going on. So even if you haven't gotten your $10,000, if you've got the time, you might as well just go ahead and make the call. You never know. And they yeah, might Tom, one of, one of yours would have gone into the wrong bank, would, wouldn't have gone anywhere. Yeah. yeah. It would have aired out. And we keep saying $10,000, but it might not actually be $10,000. It's uh, $1,000 per employee up to $10,000. Up to, yeah. yeah. So if you what don't can, have... I can tell you, I've gotten... The what are they calling it for the the EIDL the the emergency, emergency grant the emergency it used to be grant and they yeah, now it's advanced to, to advance. Advance. I've gotten that for three different companies two of them have rather significant payrolls it was the full ten thousand one of them basically has no payroll so I, I but they gave me a thousand dollars so. And I, I'm guessing, I mean, they do, you know, I do have a P&L and I do have operating costs and, and, and cost of good soul. So it'll be interesting to see what that looks like with the rest of it. But they even threw a thousand dollars in the uh, account for a business that has no payroll. Uh, so it looks like we have a question here from Leslie. She says, for those of you who have applied or have received the $10,000, have you been paying all your employees as usual, even though they are not working? Mine are not working at this time and collecting UI. So I think that's not necessarily for the 10,000. It's more for the payroll protection plan. Yeah. Because on the payroll protection plan, if you um, get back up to your original employee level and use at least 75% of it for payroll, it should be forgivable. And there's a lot of details on it. It seems like it's changing by the day. So that may be a future one of these is to get deep in that if you haven't done it. Um, so, we had it several times, but the rules keep changing. Yeah, so I know. We, we can um, go back. And, we'll go back and do it again in a day or so. Yeah, once the, the real rules shift a little bit again. But the challenge is what do you do to get the people on board? Um, part of it is some people are paying to send, have their people out do flyering. Um, part of my plan was I was actually going to hire a couple people to do some search engine optimization. Um, now, not like third party companies, I was actually going to put some people on payroll. Um, who come in, maybe some college students for the summer and uh, create a bunch of landing pages and stuff for me. Um, other people are using the opportunity to fix their systems and their processes and clean up their manuals, uh, create a better training program. Um, I wouldn't recommend paying them to stay at home because um, I don't know. I just don't like it. If you're going to let them stay habit. at home, that's a bad I would let habit them to get into. Yeah, it's a bad habit to get into. And if I had a choice, um, if that was my only choice, is I would leave them on unemployment. You know, one question that came up today for the for the PPP, because yeah, the PPP okay. is really designed to cover payroll and to 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 keep people working while uh, we're we're trying to get our businesses ramped back up. You know, for somebody who's fairly well shut down and they get their PPP money, bang, they're on the clock. Does it, is that eight weeks count for the weeks that they're working or is that eight weeks when paychecks are going out? Because at the end of that eight week period, you probably have more people working, but they're not going to get paid till like the following Friday. And they were ask, asking me, should I like do two pay, you know, hand out two pay checks on, a, on the same day on that last Friday, just to get it in that eight week window. And it was an interesting question. And it, falls under that category of, well, we don't know how the rules are going to be applied, but possibly that would be one of the, the odd things that, that, that we might have to consider to get maximum value yeah. out of, out of that eight week period. Hope not, but yep. you, you could. So we're getting, we, we had a question come in that everyone's talking about the PPP and not a lot of people are talking about the other loan, the idle loan. Um, Reason why there's so much attention on PPP is, especially in our industries, we're so darn labor intensive, is if you get back up to full employment, it becomes a grant, which is a wonderful thing. Free money. Don't we all want free money? Um, the economic it, d d disaster loan, I always forget the eyes for it. economic injury disaster loan. Is that it? Um, 
That loan is your more traditional SBA loan that you get after a hurricane and stuff comes. Um, it is 30 years at most people I've seen quoted. It is 3.75% interest. Um, it's supposed to be six months worth of operating expense, but everyone I know who's seen it has said it seems to be roughly twice your gross profit times of, for the last year. Um, it almost seems like they've changed the formula a little bit. Um, and you can use it for different things. The PPP loans got to be very specifically used for payroll, um, rent or mortgage payments, I think utilities. Um, those are the things you can use it for. The, the other loan, the more traditional loan can be used for just about anything, but it is not forgivable. It was just a loan. However, for someone like me, Handyman Connection, we have a lot of materials. But, we buy but, the, first, but the first 10 grand mm -hmm. is supposed to be forgivable, right? On the idle? Correct. Yes. We, yeah. we, we think. They were calling it a grant. They were calling it a grant, but now they're calling it an advance, so it's a little bit fuzzy. But, but there's, there's still fine print. The last time I saw that, you, yeah. should, you 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 won't have to pay that loan back. Correct. But if you get it, they're going to take it out of your PPP loan. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I, I have seen yeah. that phrasing. I have now, seen that. Oh, well, that's the reason why. For mm -hmm. those of you that don't like Leslie, who doesn't want or need a loan. That's the reason why um, the recommendation is that you might still want to apply for it is because it's like it, it's not actually a loan. It's just a, like a donation to your company. Right. And that was one of the reasons why I was told the SBA isn't doing their more traditional thing of reaching out and contacting you because everyone and their brother applied for the idol program to get the 10,000, even though more than 90 percent of the people don't actually want it. They just won the ten thousand dollars. So the SBA finally was like, all right. We're not going to call you if you actually want this loan, call us because we're getting sick of calling people and having them say, I just wanted the grant. Um, now, the nice thing about the idle loan is you can use it for other things, though. You can use it to cover car payments. Um, you can use it to cover credit card payments. You can use it. In my case, once again, Handyman Connection, we've got a lot of materials that we have to buy to keep operating. So to be able to finance those materials is a big deal. But it is a loan. So you've got to be um, careful and strategic about it, not treat it like a lot of people are treating PPP like free money. I'm going to do all sorts of things like, mm. you know, have my son work for me and weirdness. This is a loan and you are going to have to pay it back, but it's a really favorable rate. Um, and on industries like mine that have more material or marketing expenses, um, all of those things can be thrown into that loan. Category. Regardless of what industry you're in, especially given all the uncertainty that we're dealing with now, it's it has the potential of being a material amount of money at a really, really low interest rate, like 3.75 with a 30-year AM. So it's almost like giving you enough money to buy a house, but you've got the money. And there's who knows what's going to be happening with interest rates moving forward, but it's likely that they're going to go higher rather than go lower because there's not much lower that they can go. And in a couple of years from now, having that much cash at that low an interest rate is it's going to be worth more, I, I, I guess, or has the potential of being worth more. If you even if you don't like borrowing money, just take it in and in, in, in stick it in an account and don't touch it for, you know, a year or so till you get out of this whole, you know, COVID-19 world and, and see where you're at that, um, you know, it's better to have it, not need it and need it and not have it. Yeah, there's some confusion because I've heard people say you can't do both, but you actually can. You just can't ask for the same things. When you ask for the idle loan, it's supposed to be six months worth of operating expenses. Um, but if you've got a PPP loan, you can't count payroll, rent and utilities because you're using that for that portion. But you can still use it for your six months of everything else. Um, well, well, the idle loan you've got for perpetuity uh, for like 30 years, you can do whatever. I mean, you, you've you got to use it within your business. I mean, there's rules. Right. What it, I'm saying, it, though, is when you when you justify the amount you need, you're supposed to take here's my operating expenses and you'll need to take your payroll, your rent and utilities out of it. Then multiply that times six months um, is basically the formula they're supposed to use. Now, what I'm being told by people is, well, that's the formula they're supposed to be using that. They're just throwing numbers out. Right? The people that are getting getting material amounts of money. So I'm right. not sure what the math is, but uh, just another reason to call that number and ask for your uh, link to the portal. Um, it's 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 a it's it's an awesome opportunity, I, I think, for, for for small businesses, regardless of uh, what industry you're in. It's uh, 
like I if said, you've been doing the right things and paying your taxes and are above board, if once again, you're someone who's been flying a little bit under the radar, it's kind of a lousy time because if you haven't been playing the game right and paying your taxes, it's uh, the government's not feeling like helping you much right now. Yeah. Another really nice thing when you get your portal link is it does tell you how much your payment's going to be too. Yeah. And another thing that nobody's talking about is your first payment isn't due for a year. So, I mean, that's, really a, a, a material amount of help right there too so and and i wouldn't count on this at all but it's something that's worth thinking about that from a political wins standpoint it seems like more and more we're all about debt forgiveness you know student loans we need to forgive you know we forgive every other type of loan it's not beyond the realm of possibility like a couple of years from now and all these ppp loans are, are, are coming due, that they're going to do some type of deals where they're extending the terms or doing something. Again, I have no idea, but if you look at everything else that's going on, it would certainly fit the narrative. At least the current narrative. Where we're going to be in two years. Yeah, I think you're eventually going to have a swing in the opposite direction because somebody's going to have to pay all these bills and you're going to have some pushback. But right now, everyone's fighting over their free candy. Nobody's paying back this trillions of dollars <laughs> we're throwing out there. That's not happening. Yeah, even, you know, $450 billion, I guess, is coming out in this next tranche. And we're, we, 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 we just, you know, hundreds of billions of dollars doesn't sound like as much money as it used to. Yeah. That's not when they're throwing around numbers with T's in it. Oh, this is our $3 trillion rescue plan. Yeah. Ah, uh, so let's see. I did want to talk about something else. You guys remember earlier? I said, <laughs> I don't remember what it is right now. It was really um, important. Say it again, Tom? It was really important, but you were, yeah, you, were, you, were, you were eating lunch at the time, so I kind of missed the gist. No, this was after lunch. I was still picking my teeth. I know it was after lunch. All right, so it was about, I do remember, um, what are some of the things that um, people are doing right now while they're, what I'm finding is the people that I'm talking to, most of the people are out of this pause stage. There were a lot of people that were really angry, really frustrated, really just like kind of apathetic, just feeling like, oh, can't move at all, can't do anything. But most people seem to have moved past that a little bit. And I'm wondering what some of the um, companies out there are doing um, to sort of reset. And an example is I know quite a few companies that are taking this opportunity, especially the companies that are closed, to reschedule, not reschedule, reorganize all of their jobs. So instead of having Mrs. Jones on Monday and Mrs. Smith way down here on Monday, now Mrs. Jones is on Monday, Mrs. Smith is on Wednesday, and all these jobs here are being moved around to match and all these are being moved around. So I know a lot of people are optimizing their schedules. Uh, I know a lot of people are focusing in on their marketing. I know at least four companies, my own included, that changed our uniforms and we ordered all new uniforms. I'm just curious what other companies are doing out there and, and what are you guys? Oh, looks like uh, the neat is um, redoing training and documents, updating her website, getting her ready, videos ready to add to marketing. I know a lot of people well, are doing people video shooting video. Too. Yeah, that's a big thing right now. What else? What are you guys doing? Derek, are you doing anything at the handyman company? Well, we're largely still open since we are in an essential service. Um, what we've been doing mostly is just working on search engine optimization since my office has slowed down a little bit. Um, there's all those landing pages and optimization stuff that we've meant to do the whole time. So we've been trying to get all of that done. Um, we've also taken the opportunity to reach out to a couple of people who wrote us nasty reviews back in the day and um, throw ourselves on their mercy and basically beg them to fix it and give us a chance to come and redo it. Um, we have openings on the schedule. So, hey, how about we come you know, do a redo for free and see what you think, get rid of those. So we've been doing some of that type of cleanup stuff. Ah, I could do that too. That's good. Uh, it's good timing, right? We have availability to do mm -hmm. it. And although we might not have as much money right now. Um, you know, if you, if you haven't gotten any money yet, I know a couple of people, a few people that haven't gotten any money, not even. Not their 
You haven't gotten your stimulus either, Derek? No, nope, yeah. not a thing. So yeah. the good news is we've been managing to crawl through and stay afloat with it all. So I'm kind of at this point hoping that uh, when that money comes in, it's going to launch me out the other side because I'll have money for marketing and uh, recruiting that other people don't have. But yeah, the last six weeks has not been fun. That's why uh, they were making fun of me and saying a couple calls ago, I just looked mad the whole time. I probably was, you know, <laughs> there, there were days. And the other thing I've had here is while we've stayed open, I have given my people the choice that if they don't feel unsafe, they can tag out. And as the weeks were going out, more and more people were saying, I don't want to work. I don't want to work. And um, with the joy of having delay in your payroll is when people are doing that, I'm paying payroll from two weeks ago when I had eight people working with six people working and you get the idea, it kept going down. So now I'm on the other end of the cycle where guys are coming back and I'm paying for little payrolls. It's like paying for when you pay for Christmas, uh, the week after Christmas, every single week here. Yeah, I'm seeing people say they took the HCT course, lots of people taking training. You know, yeah, the HCT lots course, of training. The course that we offered, the GBS course, um, yep. We've been uh, working a lot on developing training materials. We've got a lot more in the pipeline. Been spending a lot of time doing research on, you know, for years through modern cleaning, we've been, you know, kind of nerdy with, with the science of cleaning and various technologies and earlier adopters on a lot of stuff. But um, we haven't aggressively gone after like electrostatic, uh, you know, uh, misters and, and, and some of that uh, equipment, but we're taking a harder look at that. And, you know, we've done the hypochlorous acid and we've, we've played around with a lot of stuff stuff that we've never really put in production before, but we're taking a harder look at, at, at trying to figure out, you know, is that really uh, something that, that, that we could use in a way where it would be uh, value added in this uh, COVID-19 world. And on the other end of that spectrum, and maybe you guys would have some, somebody would have some thoughts on this, figure that we've, we've got uh, some time because we're closed down in some areas to go back and, 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 and look at bill rates for, for recurring clients to see if we have anybody that uh, needs any rate adjustments or, or, or rate increases. And I know it's kind of counterintuitive to go to somebody who might not even be using your service at the moment because they don't want uh, people in their house and say that, uh, well, you know, it's time to, to do an adjustment or, or an increase. Um, but at the same time, we, we know that if we let time go by and we neglect to do those things, then the problem gets harder and harder to fix as time goes on. I'll tell you what, that? if it was me, I'd use it as an opportunity. I, I wouldn't raise their prices, but I would use it as an opportunity to look like I'm giving them a great present in not raising their prices. It's time for a price increase, but because of the situation that we're in, we're going to go ahead and defer that price increase so they still know it's coming. Yep. So yeah, that'd be my strategy. Um, uh, Greg, no, not Greg, sorry. Uh, that's actually Rosemary. Good job, Rosemary. We're doing the same thing and congratulations on getting that 60% back right away. Um, that's gonna be nice to get up and running. I'm assuming you have the PPP, so yay for you. Uh, Mary has a question here. How or which revenue numbers figured for a buyer to pay a seller those percentages? Okay, well, there, yeah, there's two different things we're talking about. Normally, when you buy a business, um, you're paying a multiple of cash flow. So in a normal market, you're saying, well, this business last year made $50,000, so I'm going to pay two or three times that. Since everybody's flat out guessing on what percentage of our customers are actually going to come back, and since nobody has a lot of cash right now, most of the transactions that I'm seeing happen are people are giving a percentage of revenue going forward. Um, so saying... Here's the deal. You send out an email to everyone. You say you're going out of business. You're sending everyone over to Derek's cleaning service. I'm going to basically put them in my CRM with a lead source of your company. And I'm going to run a report every month and give you some percentage of that revenue. Now, it's typically either 10% for a longer period of time, anywhere from a year to three years, or 20% if it's a short period of time, six months to a year. Um, and you can debate which of those is better. Um, when negotiating, sometimes it's good to be flexible. Sometimes people need the money quick. Um, sometimes people like the idea of three years worth of paychecks, even if they know they're going to be declining. Um, when I sold my dog daycare, I did it with a five-year payoff. And I got to say, I liked getting monthly checks for five years. When they stopped coming, it was kind of a sad day for me because I'd gotten used to that. 
we've used the term over and over again. This is an unprecedented event and yep. selling a cleaning business in this time is an unprecedented event as well. The scenario that, that Derek just described to you is if you're buying somebody else's accounts, their clients, if you will, if you're buying their, their, their business and their other assets, if there's equipment and vehicles and, and, you know, it would, that deal would look completely different if there was somebody who was leaving their corporate job and was buying your business and they were going to run it as your business and use your website, your brand, and you'd be able to command you know, a better deal than that. But a lot of these deals that we're seeing is two competitors in the same market and one of them's just selling their accounts to the other one. That would, would look more like what, what Derek just described. Traditionally, it's top line revenue in residential cleaning, I don't know, three three months worth of revenue, give or take. But you just don't know, like Derek said, you just don't know what that revenue is going to look like now. Yep. So doing it over a period of time off earnings might make more sense. Well, and it's also just why there's an opportunity right now is there's a fair amount of people that are just done. The, the, this has broken them and they don't want to do it anymore. And they will sell for whatever they can get. When the option is uh, close my doors and get nothing or give it to you and get 10% for three years. Getting 10% for three years sounds like a good deal. Um, and it, do you have it, numbers on that, Derek? Like, like, do you have an idea about when people might want to make that decision? Like if you are this size company doing, you know, maybe you had to shut down. I mean, or whatever. Honestly, yeah. the punchline is you're probably going to get the same amount of money on both. It's just a matter of, do you get more up front or more late or, or more of it later on? Um, because traditionally, you guys know, we lose anywhere from 30 to 50% of our recurring client base on any given year if you've got a 3% loss rate. So if I, you just... I, just so you're doing the math in my head, because I know that Derek and I had a discussion earlier today and we were kind of brainstorming a little bit. But if you would accept that under normal times, three uh, three months worth of, of top line revenue is a fair value for for recurring accounts, that's like... 300% of one month's revenue. So if you're doing it at 10%, you would argue that's 30 months and you're going to have ammunition of that because those accounts are going to dwindle down. But you can probably do the 10% like over a three year period. Yep. And if you're doing 20%, that would probably be at least a year to a year, maybe 18 months. Yeah. And now, it's off of, we had a question. It's off of just like revenue or sales. Um, what do you generate from those customers as opposed to profit? And the reason why 10% is attractive to some people, because most of us run at a 20% profit margin. So if I'm paying 10% to somebody else, I'm still making a little bit of cash for those three years. 20% um, can be attractive because while it's break even, once that short period of time is done, then you get to keep all the money. Um, so there's pluses and minuses of both models. Um, and once again, this is not the typical deal you see. This is what's happening right now because there's a lot of people who are saying, I just don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to rebuild again. I don't want to start from zero again. And they, yet they've got a book of business. And then there's some of us out here that are getting grant money from the government, not grants, forgivable loans from the government, but we got to get back up to full payroll. And we're thinking best case, two thirds or 70% of our customers are coming back. So how do we get that other third? Well, hoovering up some of these little companies and some of them aren't so little. I just saw one with 300,000 in revenue, but hoovering up some of these little companies is a good way to fill that gap. Yep. I thought I saw a question over here, but maybe not. Uh, makes sense. Thanks. Yep. Uh, uh, anybody have any other questions, concerns, anything else that y'all are thinking about out there? I was going to say, this could be our first ever live that finishes early. Yeah. We aspire, we aspire for that. Just about, <laughs> this never works. Where though. there's not so much chaos that we can't talk for five hours. Well, and people are starting to really settle in. You know, this is kind of the, the new normal, even though we're not, the uncertainty is the new normal right now. Thanks for the info. I've been approached, but did not know how to respond. Okay. Great, Kelly. Kelly, you should have talked about that in your mastermind group. I bet you would have gotten a lot of feedback there. <laughs> uh, Caleb, great info. Good. Uh, well, and Caleb, we were talking with Caleb a little bit earlier. So that's good info. Great. Glad to glad that was helpful. Caleb. Uh, good for Patricia. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Kelly. 
Sure, it's so nice to see the three of you. It brings back good memories. Yeah, you too. Yeah, I really yeah. like seeing you, Sarah, even if I just see your little icon there. We're putting the band back. Uh, What's that, the Blues Brothers? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Linda wants to know where we got our new uniforms. We got them from Uniform Advantage. They are um, flag pattern and pet, pet uh, American-made uh, red, white, and blue pet also because we have a, a pet-friendly company and we have a pet-friendly um, charity, charitable thing that we do each month. Uh, change up some of my cleaning tools. Are you all using steamers such as ladybug, protein vacuums? That's a good question. Y'all get on there and answer for Leslie what, what y'all are using for products. You know what I saw today, which was unique? Um, CleanMax just introduced a new device literally this week that is a steamer that can also be uh, converted to a mister. Um, so you can use it to both the fog and steam, which I thought was really interesting. That might be something we want to get into at some point in the future. Yeah. Uh, Bobby, you wanted to know where to find a course for certification um, about disinfecting, fogging, etc. Those things specifically, you might want to reach out to your local Jansan um, if you're just look, looking for how to use the, the that equipment. Um, Here's a question about perfect clean microfiber towels. I think uh, ARCSI has a discount, do they not? They do. Yep, they do. I'm not sure what the secret handshake is in order to get that. It might be as simple as saying you're a member. Let's see. Can you pay back your idea? I don't. Yeah, you can pay back your idol early, Sarah. Yes, you can. Um, UV wands look interesting too. Go ahead, Tom. I see discussions here about uh, UV light, UVC. There's this technology out there I was reading about this weekend about far UVC. And these are like devices where you can actually live in the space when these things are working. And um, you can use it to like just you put like you put this in your car and it's just constantly sanitizing your car or you can do it an indoor living space as well. It's, uh, I, I, I can see the whole cleaning thing going where not only are we like removing soil from a surface, but we're also kind of like consultants helping uh, consumers make changes in their home that's making it safer from a, from a hygiene standpoint. But I think uh, you're gonna see a lot more of the, the UV light. <coughs> Tammy is saying just put Arxy in the discount code for um, perfect clean microfibers. Uh, Linda, your question, when you need to be fully staffed? So the trick is you have to be fully staffed on June 30th. Okay, so um, they they haven't told us yet how long you're going to have to keep that full staffing, but June 30th is when you have to be fully staffed. Yeah, I suspect somebody's going to catch on that we could mass lay off a bunch of people on July 1st. So. Okay. Well, they, they've already been talking about that, so it's, that's a conversation that's being had that's you're not going to be able to lay them off that's that's pretty sure the way the rules are written now it appears like you might be but the thinking is they're going to change that yeah they're they saying that they don't have all the rules out yeah kind of sucks to take money thinking it'll be forgivable when they haven't written the rules yet yeah a little bit of a roller coaster um how does perfect clean microfiber differ differ from just microfiber you want to that one, Tom? Well, Perfect Clean is a hospital grade microfiber, but I want to be clear, it's not the only one out there. Um, there's other vendors that you can do it. What you really want to do is, is look at things like how is it manufactured. You want split microfiber and you want microfiber that has a high grams per cubic meter content. And um, Really, I guess we, I'm sure that we actually have articles about this on modern cleaning. I need, need to dig that up and share it because we researched the heck out of this a number of years ago. Um, but, you know, Perfect Clean happens to be a, a, a brand that I'm familiar with. Uh, Direct Mop Sales has, you know, the quality, you know, product as well. There's I love them. That's who I use, Tom. Several, several, several sources for that. But you want to be 
uh, asking about the uh, grams per cubic meter. You want to be asking about how is it manufactured? Is it is it is it split microfiber? Because it's when you get the split microfiber that the actual strand is exploded out into sharp angles, and that's what cuts the uh, the, the the microscopic particles off of off of a surface, and rather than smearing it around the way a cotton towel would is actually picking up and holding it and if it's uh, if, it, if it's you know, high quality but has a high uh, grams per uh, cubic meter you know heavier weight if you will it's much less likely to take any organic matter you've picked up and redeposit it on a clean surface what time Derek, we got here yep it's time Tom Derek I'm just want to let you know too Derek lost his internet so he's not, he won't be back uh, for the rest of this uh, Facebook Live. But yeah, if you could get the link for us, that would be great. And Linda, and in the, after, sorry, Tom, go ahead. I'm just saying, unless his internet comes back, there's always a hope. Have, have you met Derek? He's not coming back, Tom. <laughs> he's on to something else, I, I promise you. Oh, he's yeah. off doing something else. Uh, so Linda, in answer to your question, but if you're eight weeks, there he is. See, his internet just died. If your wait eight weeks ends before June 30th, then what? Same story. You still have to be fully staffed by June 30th. So uh, the, the big problem there is hard to get fully staffed if you're, you were funded 10 weeks before June 30th. There's direct mock sales right there. That's who I use, you guys. So um, they, they have great microfiber. And what did Derek tell us, Tom, that they are chemically and physically um, split, is that right? Yeah, this is kind of the standard approach for making split microfiber, but you know, they, they and be mindful, they've got all kinds of grades. So you, you, yeah. you might even serve yourself well to have a discussion with them and let them know what your interests are and you're looking for, you know, you have a company that, that, that wants to do hygienic house cleaning and you know, what's the best product for that? And they'll steer you towards you know, the split microfiber that's got the heavy uh, grams per um, cubic meter weights. You guys can see my screen? Yes. Okay, Sarah, okay. Fully, let me answer these question, questions real quick, Tom. Okay. Um, Sarah, fully staffed to the number that they asked you for about last year. Um, some people know that I heard they asked about February and some people I heard about their average for last year. So that was a little confusing for me because up until I had heard about the February thing, I had um, only heard that they were asking about the average for last year. And that was the number that we were telling they were using. So um, I hope you got the answer to your question, Patricia, uh, Linda. I'm not sure I finished answering you. I think I might have. Sorry, guys. Hold on. Um, I think I might have started answering and then I didn't. Um, what, I, what I wanted to finish saying was if your eight weeks ends before June 30th, like let's say it ends on the 22nd, it's a bummer because you won't, unless you were fully staffed on June 30th, you won't get all of that money forgiven. So even if you weren't fully staffed earlier on in the eight weeks, as long as on June 30th you are, you will get all of those monies for, forgiven. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, Tom. Okay, I'm gonna share several links here. First, I'm gonna ask for a favor from everybody. The link I'm sharing is for the Modern Cleaning YouTube site. We've got the links to the COVID-19 training that we did and people were asking for links on like the bed making, all of that's here. I need subscribers to this page. I have 54. If I get 100 subscribers, I can do more with this page. So if at least 46 of you guys or friends of you guys could, could help me out and, and subscribe to this page, that would, would be cool. And there's going to be a lot more stuff there. Are all of the videos on the Modern um, Cleaning channel, Tom, currently? Uh, all the ones that, that, that we did, there's some links. And actually, I can put them on there, too. They're not ours, but like the Johns Hopkins uh, hand-washing video. Uh, <clears throat> I, we, can, we follow that page so you can get to it. 
Um, I also took all those links and posted them in Facebook yesterday as well, like in a, in a post, including that yeah. and how to remove the gloves. Some of, some of the videos that we used in the, uh, the training, we, we borrowed from other people. Here's modern cleaning. And this is where you can also get to, you know, class one, class two, and you click here, it will take you to um, the learning platform that will allow you to uh, get the certificate of completion. Check your number, Tom. You should be over 60 by now. I see people done, 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 done. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Appreciate yeah. your help. Thank you. Um, if you haven't done this yet, I, 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 I need you to do it. I want you to do it because we want as many people to get this as, as we can. At the same time, you know, I guess it's no secret that, that Liz and I are in the training business and the consulting business. And, you know, I'm, 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 I'm calling in a lot of markers with a lot of people and actually spending a fair amount of money on all of this as well to kind of get all this done. And sooner or later, we're going to wind up charging for this. And sooner versus later. I'm pushing yeah. for sooner, Tom's pushing for later. Just just so you know. So it wouldn't surprise me that that I'll, I'll go as far as to say any day now, you might find that this whole arrangement has changed and there's a fee associated for 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 this. And it, it'll still be a value, but for, the, for those of you who have taken advantage of doing this for free, then it's great. The value of, of the investment of time you put into this has increased greatly once we start charging for this. And I hope everybody sees it. So um, take advantage of this now. If you haven't done this tonight, do it tonight. Um, it takes about three hours worth of videos and it's a 20, 20 question test, but um, it'll be it'll be be time well spent. I think you'll find too that the uh, test is not easy. Uh, and, but you'll find when you take the test, you'll feel good about your training. Uh, everybody that I talked to after they took the test was like, wow, I didn't even realize that I learned so much stuff. Uh, Linda, next week, too late. Get on there. Get them on there now, Linda. Uh, this week. You need to get them on this week for free. Um, also, the um, COVID bed changing video Leslie, I did see that when Tom just pulled up the Modern Cleaning channel. So go ahead and, and look there. It's right uh, here. Yeah. yeah. And there's um, also a post that I put up yesterday in both Modern Cleaning and Cleaning Business Today that's got individual links for, for all this stuff, including this and the hand, the uh, Johns Hopkins hand washing and... Um, the glove removal, doffing uh, the, the, the surgical gloves. And um, Patricia, I'm not sure I understand your question. Once you charge, will you switch to certification? So uh, right now you can take the, take the um, watch them to the two videos and take the test at no charge and you will receive a certificate. When we charge for it, it'll be the same thing but there will be a fee. So that's why we're trying to get everybody, all your friends, all your cleaning business friends, get them to get on here and do it now. Um, is it the same as the ARCSI test? No, it is not, Amelia. There are a few different ARCSI trainings that have different tests associated with them, but this is not one of them. Oh, I did see that, thank you. Okay, good for Leslie and Anything else over here, Tom? Uh, cleaning business today. Subscribe over here if you haven't subscribed. You'll be on our mailing list. And we've got our super secret page with all of the resources we've been sharing since we've been doing this uh, 5 o'clock Facebook Live. How long have we been doing this? A few weeks. Really? Yeah. At, at least two weeks. Why? <laughs> a, lot longer, a lot i promise you it's been a lot longer than two weeks i'm thinking two weeks in a day maybe dear goodness. okay 
Uh, Liz goofs on me all the time, and I'm just like, I take a hook on and go. Yes, this is very, very true. Someday you guys remind me to tell you about the time when um, Tom was really worried that I was going to run out of gas and drive him around the city. Can't tell you on here. It takes too long. If you hit me up for it, and I'll tell you. Uh, Bridget, it says four weeks. You know what she's talking about with the four weeks? We've been doing this for four weeks. What? Yeah, probably. No way. No way. April twentieth. Oh, since March twentieth, not a chance. I'm sorry. I call foul. Actually, yeah. we started on we started on a Thursday. I do remember that. That's why I said three weeks and a day, because Thursday was the end of a week, <laughs> and then a day. I, yeah. I think you're right, Patricia. I'm thinking I'm we did right. one. I'll, I'll look it up. I'll, 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 I'll it up. figure it out. You want, be, bet, Tom? you want to have a you want to have a bet on who's closer? Three weeks or four weeks? Yeah, I guarantee you, it's at least four weeks. I at probably, least four. At least four. At least four. I guarantee you, it's under four. Okay, you guys, bet bet. Who do you think is the winner? We'll tell you tomorrow who's the winner. But I can already tell you, it's me. Yes, Caleb, you're right. Admit, Liz knows best, Tom. Mm, we'll, we'll say. It's, Sorry. it's under four. <laughs> Guaranteed under four. Guaranteed. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks, All right. guys. We're done for today. We will see you tomorrow, and you'll see who the winner is. Talk Five o'clock Eastern. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Bye.